Hi. Topic of this video is modeling uncertainty and sensitivity analysis for sampling based simulation approaches. Firstly, we need to define what we mean by sensitivity analysis. Sensitivity analysis is a study of how the variation in the output of a model, numerical or otherwise, can be apportioned qualitatively or quantitatively to different sources of variation and of how the given model depends upon the information fed into it. There are several reasons why we would like to use sensitivity analysis. Very often we want to validate a model that we have done. We want to point out what are the most important criteria, meaning what are the most important inputs affecting the output or output values. Sensitivity analysis also may reveal us unrealistic model behavior, and it also helps us to formulate the model structure. For example, very often it's possible to simplify a model after we have, have done it, and we can see that not necessarily all the parameters are necessary for our model. Sensitivity analysis may also guide us for future data collection, as it may show us what is the inf important information that we are still missing. And in some other R&D project, it may show us what are the new experiments we should make based on our results. It also helps us in choosing the optimal operating point, for example, if we can switch between different operational modes in industry or at some plant. Sensitivity analysis can also be used for allocating resources, suggesting manufacturing tolerances, or for identifying cost drivers. Here is presented a typical process for constructing a sampling-based simulation model for sensitivity analysis. I won't go through these steps here because Palisade Asterisk's quick tutorial guides you through these steps in more detail. So, why use simulation with spreadsheet adding package for modeling uncertainty and doing the sensitivity analyses? Firstly, everyone knows spreadsheet packages. Every manager, every student, everyone has in practice Microsoft Office Pack or something similar on their desktop and knows how to use it. They are quite good with their features. They have built-in management of access of data and display of data. They also have lots of good built-in functions available, built-in statistical methods, analysis of variance, regression and so on, also pivoting and other filtering methods for data analysis, good built-in charts and so on. It is also possible for users to define their own macros with Visual Basic for applications, which is also sometimes used by the companies. Therefore, it's very solid alternative for the industry and businesses because they are already used to this tools. The two most common of these spreadsheet uh, simulation add-ins are at risk from the Palisade Corporation and Crystal Ball by the Oracle Corporation. One possible downside of using this approach is that while both the Microsoft Excel may update and so do also at risk and Crystal Ball, it may happen that the version of Excel and the simulation software are not compatible with each other. Also, it may not be possible for the user to see the results and do the what-if analysis if the user doesn't have himself on the laptop the actual license of at risk or crystal ball. And the companies may not be willing to invest in this software because the packages for the industrial license are quite, quite expensive. And also there's a learning curve for using them. And probably that's still the reason why Pure Excel is still by far the most common way and tool for doing the capital budgeting and investment analysis with its built-in functions and features. Next, we discuss the properties of technically good sensitivity analyses. 
There are several different aspects that we have to take into account when considering uh, what is the good sensitivity analysis in our model. Firstly, a good sensitivity analysis technique that has the ability to cope with the influence of scale and shape. What this means is that the influence of the input should incorporate the effect of the range, variation and the form of its probability density function. This means that it should include all the possible values that the input variable is and is able to, able to get and also have the form which mimics the reality of the input parameter. Secondly, a good uh, sensitivity analysis should include ability to multidimensional averaging. This means that to, when we do a typical sen sensitivity analysis, for example in Excel for a cash flow calculation, we usually make a local analysis. It means that we change one after another each parameter value in our model and then we see how the outcome changes according to that. In the global analysis instead, we evaluate the effect of a factor while all other variables are also varying. And this is often much better choice. The third good property of sensitivity analysis is being model independent. This is partly related to the previous multidimensional averaging. The idea here is that the model should work regardless of the additivity or linearity. It means that it's important to understand the interaction between different model parameters. It is essential to understand that sometimes the effect of combined change is significantly different from the separate uh, sums or changes of input variables. An example of this is throwing two dice. If we sum them up, we get the sum which is between 1 and 12. However, if we multiply the two together, we know that the outcome is some number between 1 to 36. Therefore, the actual output is significantly more different and not as smoothly distributed as the sum. And therefore, it is also important to take into account these model axes or linearities when doing the sensitivity analysis. A fourth property of technically good sensitivity analysis is the ability to treat grouped factors as if they were single factors. In this approach, we are actually combining different, different separate input parameters so that they act in a model and our sensitivity analysis as if they were only one single input parameter or output. If we couldn't be able to do this, we wouldn't necessarily see the forest from the trees because the uncertainty related to certain inputs could be divided between different time periods in cash flow calculation. And therefore we would not be able to single out what are the actual most significant uncertainties in our model because there it may look like many separate uncertainties if we have, for example, a weekly or a monthly demand in our model. Some methods allow sufficient post-processing of the results so we are able to group the factors, but sometimes we may need to use some other tools so that we can make good use of the results, so that the sensitivity analysis is understandable to the viewer. Luckily, cash flow simulation methods from the sensitivity analysis viewpoint are not that difficult. There are several reasons for that. Firstly, usually the number of parameters in the cash flow calculation model is quite limited. Also, not so many of the parameters and inputs in the cash flow calculation model are significant to the outcome and its variance. Thirdly, there are hardly any significant higher order interactions in the usual cash flow calculation models. And also, if there are such, the modeler who has actually done the cash flow calculation should also be aware of them and therefore know them in advance. As a result, we could say that modeling of the cash flow calculation itself is actually much more difficult than doing the sensitivity analysis afterwards to the calculation model. So instead of putting 
way too much effort to the sensitivity analysis, I'd say then that please use the time and improve the actual cash flow calculation model and think of its properties.